Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Domain Cast. Welcome back, everybody. And I'm here once again with my pal Zildjian, 65 Zildjian. Say hello to the fans. Yeet. Today we're going to be going over some very, very interesting topics, to say the least. Uh, one of them would be the Fortnite Avengers crossover for Endgame, uh, Assassin's Creed Unity being used to rebuild the Notre Dame Cathedral, which tragically almost burnt down to a crisp. And the next generation rumors for PlayStation 5 and what it's having under its hood in terms of horsepower and technical specifications. And you'll be getting a very detailed, in-depth breakdown by Zildjian. So first off, let's start off with Assassin's Creed Unity being used to recreate the Notre Dame Cathedral, which unfortunately caught on fire very recently, which some of you might have not heard about. And it was a very tragic thing that happened. I think the cathedral was built like somewhere around the 12th century, Zildjian. Something around, like that. Yeah, something around there. Um, it was. I don't know how the fire was started yet, but they did save, from what I saw on television and a lot of online news articles, they did save a lot of stuff from the cathedral. And yeah. They were doing renovations. Yeah, you, you bring up a good point there, since they were already taking everything out and stuff. It was a lot... Uh, it was a lot more easier to save things, I guess you could say. In like, terms we're not of, saying like, it's great to have a fire. But no, yeah, like, obviously, if, if, it's a if, shitty if situation. They, if they had to, right now was the best time. Yeah. Like, uh, 90% of all the relics are already out. Did you see that picture of the cross being, like, left alone? It was, like, untouched? Yeah, I saw that. It was pretty cool, I guess. I think it would have been cooler that, you know, the main architecture was saved. But, hey... Yeah. So, something irrelevant was saved, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would have been cool. Can't cooler. save everything, you know. <laughs> yeah, but no, it's one of those shining light of hope meme kind of pictures that's gonna get tossed around to Facebook groups a lot. Yeah, I like I, I've seen it a lot on the television, obviously. Yeah. And I mean, I'm happy it was saved, but like like you said earlier, the the other things that were lost, like the main parts of the building and stuff, you're not gonna be able to replicate that, and you know. Emmanuel Macron, I think that's the French, what, president, prime minister? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know what the official title is over there. He's like, oh, we're going to pledge to rebuild Notre Dame. But I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking here, right? And I'm just like, bro, it, you're not going to be able to like replicate it completely. Well, they can to an extent. Um, the really good thing about it being Notre Dame that has to be rebuilt is not just from a... Uh, and we'll get into the Assassin's Creed part in a second, but from any historical perspective, there is no there is no more photographed or documented building than this. So like they can rebuild it to a T, exactly how it was, like nothing changed. Good point, but what I'm more like going for is like the worksmanship and craftsmanship from the yeah. people we have today. Like there's certain techniques that I'm sure you agree with that would that was probably lost to time that we can't replicate exactly. No, like for example, like there's some sort of like stone or whatever from like in, yeah. from like the Romans or something that's like even stronger than that than we can even replicate right now with our current tech. Like that's what I'm trying to get at. Oh yeah, definitely. And Assassin's Creed, oh, we'll go get into this obviously. Um, Assassin's Creed Unity is being used to rebuild it, and Ubisoft actually donated uh, like five hundred thousand or is it fifty thousand? I'm not sure about. It that. was one of those two. One of those two. To uh to the rebuild and also, um two, this is the first time in years I've seen good good coverage of Assassin's Creed Unity. Is I think this it was five hundred thousand euros? I think. Okay. Yeah. But oh yeah, but you're right though about the good coverage. <laughs> this, and I got it for free. Um, I don't know if you guys uh guys will sing no, but. The promotion might be over by now, I believe. I think it ended yesterday as I'm recording this. Where basically for PC and on console, actually, digitally, the game was free. If you got it through the Uplay store for like 10 days, it was free. So, I got it on Uplay. I'll never play it, but I got it. <laughs> like, I'll never play, but I just got it, you know? Hey, I, I, I more got it to support them. You know what you're doing. Just um, get the game for free. What was I gonna say? What I what I found so interesting is, in this whole process, I learned that uh, Notre Dame Cathedral actually kept a copy of the game on hand. So like, there's an actual like copy of Unity. Yeah, with, inside like, there. 
because they because they liked how Ubisoft designed it in the game so much. I mean, there you go. Just pop it in your Xbox or PS4 or whatever. Yeah. On the screen and boom. They're actually going to be using that, uh, everybody, to uh, rebuild parts of Notre Dame since the team at Ubisoft did such a good job at replicating the Notre Dame Cathedral in game. They're going to be using that as a, uh, and I'm pretty sure they're going to use also thousands of photos that have been taken over yeah. over the course of the years. Like Zildjian said, it's like one of the most, uh, you know, well photo documented places on earth in order to rebuild the cathedral. And everything is too is not only did they get the inside so accurate, they got the modern architecture of the outside. Like uh, even though the game is set uh, before any of the new stuff was built, Ubisoft just went with the, uh, the newer pillars and newer designs out for, out for the out for the exterior of the building. So they have that to go by in the game. Do you know by chance if they were like doing any laser scans on the cathedral when they were making the game by any chance? I'm not aware, but I imagine they would have. Yeah, because there's like a similar thing like for racing simulators and stuff like that, like Gran Turismo, they'll go to a track like let's say um, Laguna Seca here in California. Yeah. They'll do like a laser scan of the whole track and then they'll take that data and transfer it into their game engine and then it's like it's it's like a one-to-one scale of the actual track or something like that. It's only off by like the smallest of margins. So I imagine there's like some similar tech being used for Notre Dame. No, it had it had to have. And for all of Unity's faults, it does look amazing as a game. To this day, it looks great. I boot up my PC for a few minutes just to see and put it in max settings, and wow, it looked awesome. There was actually, I don't know if you saw this article, but uh, people are review bombing Assassin's Creed Unity we Assassin's Creed Unity with positive reviews now yes. since of the whole Notre Dame thing. Yeah. It's like great game. They 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 really helped us. I will say though, I wish they also made it free on Steam. It was only free for the Uplay store. I thought that was a bit off myself, but hey. It's probably Steam. a money thing. Yes, yeah, Steam probably had a say in that. <laughs> uh, but, probably a money thing there, dude. Yeah. Because it's like you play, that's their own proprietary distribution site, and then like I think Steam would probably take a cut of that. Yeah, so they probably couldn't put it for free just for a short time on there. But hey, Epic Games, right? Hey, that's a that's another that's a thing we're probably getting to for a whole nother show. <laughs> Because that, there's some interesting things developing there's there. There's some just questionable things. Very questionable things. If Tim Sling is telling the truth, great. I doubt it. Um, so, beyond AC, um, right now, obviously, we're not going to talk about Endgame spoilers. But Endgame is, it is being promoted in Fortnite. Which is uh, similar to happened last year with uh, Infinity War. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what was it. What was the promotion last year? Wasn't it like there was like a Thanos was like the enemy? Yeah, in the last year's promotion crossover event for Fortnite and Avengers, it was essentially you would just be able to play as Thanos, and that was pretty much it. But in this new one, which I've played recently, um, you can either spawn in as like one of the Chitari minions, and you have like your little blaster and your like your your mega blaster, and your main objective is to collect all the Infinity Stones for. Th- for Thanos and he comes on the map and he wrecks shit up essentially and if you're on the like Avengers hero team you can pick up the weapons that some of the Avengers use like Captain America's shield you can throw it it pounces back to you uh, Thor's hammer a uh, stormbreaker windbreaker I think it's called and it's like you throw it comes back high damage Iron Man's uh, repulsor gauntlet thingies which I think are a little overpowered since they automatically lock on to everybody and Hawkeye's bow, and I might be missing one, but that's that's the gist of it. Yeah, that's a pretty cool. I wonder what next year for, for the big Marvel movie will be. Uh, who knows? Like it's almost like a tradition at this point to have a Fortnite crossover. Marvel crossover, yeah. Now this isn't a spoiler by any means. This is just something I heard from the movie. Um, apparently there's a scene. 
in the new Endgame movie where there's actually one of the Avengers is playing Fortnite with the guy, and he gets pissed off at the guy for beating him in Fortnite, so... Oh, okay, someone DM'd that to me the other day, and I thought they were joking. That's real? Uh, I read about that online. Not sure if it's real, but I'll find out soon if that's real or not. Because <laughs> all I responded to was that it's crazy enough to believe. <laughs> like, hey, man, that uh, that uh, that collaboration money comes in handy. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, they need a lot of money to play a free game. <laughs> that's great. Something I did want to touch on uh, while we were talking is Nintendo did their uh, investors call yesterday. All right. And they revealed some of their numbers and the Switch is selling well and everything. Here's what I found interesting. So they have their top games. So does the sales stopping ch uh, charted March 31st? On this list was Yoshi's Crafted World. All right. It came out on March 29th, and it's uh, and it claimed it sold over a million. <laughs> Did Yoshi really just sell over a million copies in two days? The little green dinosaur that could, man. Come on. I didn't think Yoshi Crafted World would be, be that popular, man. I mean, I'm not that into Yoshi, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people are. Yeah. So, um, big thing we're here talking about is the PS5. The PlayStation 5. So you're you you a PlayStation boy? Are you hype? Eh, not really. I mean, every generation, they always like hype things up, right? So you kind of you don't really believe much of it. You kind of reel back your expectations. There's talk of like what 8K, whatever you know. And if you look back at right now, where we're standing right now, you know, we're still not hitting 60 FPS most of the time. In 1080p. In 1080p. <laughs> I'm like, we're probably going to barely hit that next generation. In 4K next gen It's probably going to be a lot more stable. But 8K, I don't really think it's going to be playable at all. Well, hey, think about it. You can play your 8K console, which is probably going to be $500, on your 8K Sony TV, which is, for, which is only available for the low price of $14,000. Yeah, that's another thing that uh people should keep in mind you're uh if you're on like i don't know like a 720p or 1080p tv or 4k you won't be able to enjoy the benefits of 8k you're gonna have to upgrade whether you like it or not granted you can probably play on your tv albeit at a lower at a lower resolution but do understand you're not getting the full experience that is the watered down edition you're you're going to be playing and experiencing yep so I have some specs here I'm going to read off to you guys, and Zildjian yes. can fill you in, because I, I know he wants to talk about this in depth. Yeah. But let's go into this real quick. And, and I'm the PC let's... nerd here, let's yeah. be honest. <laughs> All right, PS5 specs, guys. CPU. The PS5 CPU will be an AMD chip based on Ryzen. 8 cores, 7 nanometers Zen 2. GPU and ray tracing. The PS5 GPU will be a custom AMD Navi GPU that supports ray tracing. Audio, the PS5 will have a 3D audio that Mark Cerny believes will be dramatically different to PS4 audio. Uh, maybe, maybe not, probably not. Storage, the PS5 will have a solid-state drive, which uses the new PCI 4.0 connection. Cerny gave an example of the 0.8 second loading time compared to the 15 seconds when tested on Marvel Spider-Man. I heard about that. And the biggest thing here is the resolution, the resolution support. The PS5 will have up to 8K support. All right, Zildjian, go at it. So, the CPU, this is something that console guys need to understand. And I'm not saying, I don't just mean you, but just in, just in general. This may sound great now, but this is coming out maybe in a year or two. This is going to be extremely outdated by then. You see what I mean? No, yeah, you make a good point there about it being outdated. I think... Even but, with last generation, well, not last generation, because this is yeah still last generation, current gen right now, PS4 and Xbox One. Yeah. Even, you know, when they launched, their specs were already outdated, right? Like the Jaguar yeah. cores that the PS4 is using, pretty outdated right now. It's extremely outdated. Yeah, and so even with this new chipset, it's still going to be outdated, like you say. But I think, I think that's just going to be a thing now. 
It's it's always going to be outdated by the time it, it comes out. It's always going to be, but the problem is, especially I'm seeing this on Twitter, the console guys don't understand that. That you can't just swap out a part like I can in my PC. <laughs> like, if you do, you can do that, but then your warranty's gone. So, do, do you ever have your warranty gone or have a customized console? <laughs> my my you warranty. Think, that's a question for everyone to think about themselves. Uh, the ray tracing is, a, is really good. That's it. That it's being included. It's really intensive right now on PC, which is why I don't have it. Um, I think this isn't probably set in stone yet. They're probably going to wait till right before production to make a final decision on this so they can get the best up-to-date ray tracing. I'm still worried, though, that this may cause an overheating problem in the console. I remember, I think... Because the main people who are, like, pushing ray tracing right now is NVIDIA, right? Like, don't yeah, they have... NVIDIA. What did they say? Something about, like, specific ray tracing cores or something on their GPUs? Yeah, so... Uh, the the Navi... So, so I'll go through this. The D's processors are going to be fine. Again, outdated, but they're going to be fine. Especially if it's customized to the hardware. The biggest issue with the PS4 is it's built like a, P it's built like a PC trying to act like a console that and was i think the main selling point i think when they were pushing ps4 and xbox one if you remember they're like hey it's very very pc like yeah but consoles shouldn't be built like pcs there comes issues of optimization and overheating problems and yeah you got a point it, there because it doesn't know how to handle it when you build something like a pc even put only a tiny fan in there you're going to have an overheating problem definitely you are like that's where i mean there's a lot of peripherals i'm not gonna say i'm gonna buy them because i don't really believe that they're that high quality but i'm pretty sure you've seen like those fans you can buy those external fans on ps4s or xbox ones and stuff like that yeah i think uh there is a very big youtuber called austin evans he made let's yeah. build the best ps4 ever and like and you put like a, and you put like five or six of them on it. yeah he puts like a bunch of bullshit on the on the actual unit itself i'm like no 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 but but the ps4 has a terrible fan it's just a tiny little fan in there and audio that is actually stupid <laughs> because that's all gonna depend on your sound the monitor system you're using the sound system plugged into if you're plugged into headphones that's stupid that is honestly stupid um and even like, i like this description 3d audio does eh. anyone else see the irony in that 3d audio <laughs> the audio I mean, pops out off as, the as long as it sounds good to me i guess, as long as i can good. visibly I as I don't long as I can visibly name. hear the audio, you know. Let me let me see the audio, guys. Let me see it to believe it. <laughs> yeah, that that's a weird. Um, I, I I get where they're going with it. Um, maybe it's, it's more, geared more towards like the audiophile crowd. Um, well, I mean that that would be my that would be me, essentially because I am one. Um, even then, it depends on the sound system using. I can make my switch sound like it's. Like a movie theater with the right sound system. I've done that before. Buddy's houses where they have massive sound systems and the projector, where it feels like it's a movie theater. So, I, I mean, I don't know what I don't know where they're going with that. The storage. This is where I'm actually kind of impressed. Is they're using an, a solid state, which is using the PCIe 4.0 connection, which is good, and. They, they point out the 15 second load time for fast travel versus the 0.8 second. My my worry with that is they chose a game that's not very intensive. I haven't played Marvel Spider Man on anything recently. It does look like a really really good game though. And you it's, bring up it's fun for a playthrough too. You bring up like the intensity of the game, like how demanding is it? It's like medium level range. It's not that insane to run. 
emulators are running it kind of already. People are getting it up and running. So So what were you what what would you think would be a better game that could uh, benefit from that that they God. should benchmark? You know what would have been a good game to test it on would be Ark. Ark Survival. Well, that game's just not optimized on anything. No, no, but that would be a great way to show how optimized, how great this is. See, even Ark can run good on console now. That's a good point. There you go. Take take Ark, which has had a history of problems. Load it up on the theoretical PS5. Yeah. And boom. There you yeah, go. Yeah, that, that would have been really impressive because... That game can't run on anything. Even on high-spec on high spec PCs, it has a hard time running. So if you can get it stable and do a fast travel of less than a second on that game and have it be a stable frame rate, people would be thoroughly impressed at that. Resolution support is where I have a real issue with, your, with this. The 8K support... The PS4 Pro can't even do 4K. It's an emulated 1440p that's up and it's very unstable at that. What makes me trust or think that they can do 8K? That's also one of my concerns, like, like, like we brought up earlier when we were talking. We can't even do things stable now, right? What... Why should we believe that they're going to be able to do things competently next generation? Basics of these set, they're good. They're really good for for right now. Indeed. But I'm really worried about how they're going to outdate. When the PlayStation 3 launched, I think, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I remember people saying that the GPU was ahead of its time. It was as really is as nitpicking. I think all of them are good, you know. Yeah. Like you said, we're just nitpicking at the little fine details here. Like any of these systems are great. It's like comparing the S8 to the S10. It's like, well, do you care about two two more gigabytes of RAM? It's like one second slower, maybe one second faster. <laughs> it's like, it's it's like, do you need that? It's like, do you need the second? Do you really need it? Yeah, it's it's nitpicking, and that's how technology has gotten. It's almost a, almost technology culture at that point to nitpick. Yeah, it's like, hey, I don't I don't like the construction here. There you go. I think that's a good way to end this. We should dedicate an episode to phones because that'd be interesting. Take out your Huawei budget devices, everybody. <laughs> We're hey, going to be talking man. about the the Chinese smartphones. On the next hey, Huawei podcast. makes better phones than Apple now, I think. You know, real real quick before we end, yeah. um, this is going to be a segue for next podcast about smartphones. The new Samsung Galaxy Fold has officially broken <sighs> yep. in many, many reviewers' hands. And I read an article a, a while back that someone had stolen the schematics for the Fold and sold them to Huawei. And I'm just wondering, because I've seen the the Huawei fold rip off, I guess you could say. And I'm just like, if the Samsung one only hold up for two days, how much is the Huawei one going to hold up, like, for two minutes? It's like, damn. What's your, like, real quick thought on that before we end here? Um, Huawei actually makes good products. I've used a Huawei phone before. That was my main phone. It's just, like, just... I found one cheap. Um, I like like them. They hold up well. They they're not as built as nicely. Um, I do think that the or any fold device, no matter who makes it, is not going to hold up right now. Give it another five years. I think it's too early right now. They need to work. Yeah, give it over. Give it another five years, and then we can try it again, and maybe the fold will be in its perfect place. All right, everybody, thank you for listening to the Domain Cast number, what is this, number nine? Uh, this is num- number nine. Number, number nine. nine to the Domain Cast number nine. Zildjian, where can the loyal viewers find you for further Zildjian content? 
You can find me on YouTube at Zildjian65 or on Twitter where you can see me rant about the Epic Game Store at Zildjian65YT. There you go. Go follow him. See the rants. You can follow me here on YouTube at SuperMechGuy and follow me on Twitter at MechGuy1. And if you want to keep up to date for any other game domain topics and news and videos and other shenanigans, I highly suggest you hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell because we all know the subscription box is kind of faulty. Anyways, everybody, thank you for watching. As always, take care and we'll see you later.